So these are the Nothing Ear A, a pair of earbuds that if you told me they were $200 or even $300, I would tell you they're almost perfect, but they're not. These are $99. And yet somehow Nothing was able to cram so much into these earbuds that I think they would be competitive at any price point. These have fantastic sound, they have active noise cancellation, they have a really incredible design, and honestly, I have a checklist when I review earbuds, because I just do it so often, I have a checklist of what I look for in earbuds, from multi-point connectivity and water resistance and things like that, and honestly, these check every single box except for one, and that's not really a deal breaker. We'll talk about that later in the video, but I wanna get into a lot of testing with these earbuds. The microphone quality, the sound quality, the active noise cancellation, and everything else you might wanna know about these earbuds. But let's kind of first take a step back and look at this launch altogether. So you might be confused why Nothing came out with the Nothing Ear A and the Nothing Ear. Not, neither of them are called the Nothing Ear 3, which would be the logical next step in their lineup. And I think it's kind of just a bit of a rebrand where they wanted to have two models. They have just the Nothing Ear, kind of like AirPods Pro, for example, and these are a really great pair of earbuds. I'm not gonna talk about them in this video, but they're $150. It's a very competitive space, honestly, and I'll have another video about those coming soon. And then the Nothing Ear A, A is kind of indicating a, a more budget-friendly model, as we see a lot with phones, $99, but these are far from a cheap pair of earbuds. Like, they, they, they just do a fantastic job. And we can start off with the design. Nothing is a company that Again, I don't want to hype them up too much, trust me, like I have no investments in them or anything, uh, but I'm just excited to see a company go so quickly from not even existing to being basically iconic. Like their design is something that so many others in the industry copy. Like just look at the recent release from Beats, which also had a transparent case. A lot of iPhone skins are transparent, or not transparent, but they look like they're transparent on the back, trying to, again, kind of copy the nothing phone. So. Nothing just does a good job with their design. And yet again, we have a, a kind of unique and different design here. The design was allegedly inspired by a pill container, like the little things you pop out, like the pills from the foil looking thing. And I guess it kind of looks like that. Honestly, to me, it looks more like an AirPods case with a rectangle on the outside, which again, just looks unique and different. I really love the color on this. There are three different colors. This one, obviously the yellow one is my favorite. There's also white and there's black if you want a more of a subtle look. But when you're wearing them, what's really cool is that the yellow part is almost entirely hidden. So it's not like a big gaudy thing on your ears. You can have a really cool looking case and a cool looking pair of earbuds that still has a really subtle and understated appearance from the outside with that transparent look. So kind of like a, a teenage engineering aesthetic yet again with these earbuds and somehow very distinctly different from the Nothing Ear 2 and the regular Nothing Ear. Now the case has a really nice solid metal hinge on the back. It has a magnet to hold it shut. It has USB type C charging on the back. Uh, it does not have wireless charging, more on that a little bit later in the video. But the earbuds then, when you open it up, you'll see uh, the earbuds obviously right there. You can see when it's closed as well. They're a familiar design. They feel a lot like the original Nothing Ear, uh, the Ear 2, and these, again, are familiar design as well, similar to the AirPods as well. So as far as fit and comfort goes, I think these are incredibly comfortable, really nice soft silicone tip. I think many people have tried earbuds of this kind of architecture before, and so you probably know if they're comfortable or not for you. As far as uh, security goes, like staying in my ears, as with AirPods, the left one falls out for me personally. So if you are like a, a hardcore athlete or somebody who is really moving around a lot, that might be something you wanna be aware of. Maybe you wanna buy some aftermarket wingtips or something like that. The controls on these are completely customizable in the app and they are pinch controls, which I have mixed feelings about. I like them, but the controls sometimes try to do a little bit too much. I'll talk about that a bit more when we get into the app. Uh, the app interface, how you can customize them. But for example, there's like a double pinch and hold, which don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm really happy to see companies trying more stuff, uh, but the controls, it just it's a little finicky to get that to work just right. So it's a little bit tricky, but once you get it, it's, it's convenient, it's nice that we have kind of a fifth option for controlling there. So let's talk a little bit more about what these earbuds are able to do, kind of that checklist of, of features that I wanna see on a pair of earbuds. Starting off with multi-point connectivity, these do have that. In fact, they actually have a, a kind of a better version of that where not only can you connect to two devices at the same time, but in the app, you can choose if you want to enable or disable multi-point connectivity and choose which two devices you wanna be connected to from a checklist, kind of like a, a list of the devices that you have ever connected to uh, with these earbuds. So that's really cool. So you don't have it connecting to your phone and like your wife's phone instead of your laptop. It's really easy to control that. 
Also, in the app, you can enable low lag mode uh, so for a much lower latency, maybe for gaming, for example. These also do have mono mode because it is Bluetooth 5.3. So if you wanted to just listen to one earbud at a time while the other's in the case, you could totally do that. The waterproofing is also impressive, not only IP54 on the earbuds, which isn't the best waterproofing, but certainly enough for running or honestly, I've never, you're not gonna dunk these in water in most situations, so that's definitely good. But the case is also IPX2. So again, just a little more durability on these earbuds. Obviously being a plastic build is also gonna be nice. So it's, you know, they should be uh, fairly resistant to cracking or breaking. Uh, I would worry a little bit about scratching on the front. My older Nothing earbuds did get quite a few scratches on the front on the clear case. It's a little more visible there. Uh, but I think kind of that bumper around the outside in a weird way might actually kind of protect these a little bit. I don't know for sure. But the battery life on these is also very impressive. I normally don't care about the difference between, like companies love to advertise their battery life and then their battery life without ANC on. And I always say like, who's ever gonna listen without ANC? Like if you're buying uh, active noise canceling earbuds, you probably wanna have that enabled. But these have such a big difference that it's really worth noting. So five and a half hours in the earbuds, 24 and a half when you include the case with active noise cancellation. So that's, that's pretty competitive. Uh, but without active noise cancellation, nine and a half hours in the earbuds, which is pretty impressive, but 42 and a half hours when you include the case, which is a massive, massive battery life there for such a tiny little earbuds case. Again, that's only when you don't have ANC on, but hey, you know, that's worth considering if you're not gonna be near an outlet for a while. And also, if you are near an outlet, but not for a while, 10 minutes of charging these gives you 10 hours of listening. That's a lot. And I might as well just show you guys the app to kind of show you some of the other features on here. The app is really clean. I like how they don't try to do too much. They don't have like a media playback controls on here because honestly, who is going to the Sony app to control their music? I think most people are probably not doing that. But here you can see just the earbuds right there. They tell you the battery level on the bottom, probably the four most common things you'd go to. The equalizer is not nearly as intense as the nothing ear, like the, the flagship model. Uh, so. I'll talk about that in that video, but it still can get the job done. You have bass, mids, trebles, obviously, uh, and some presets on the bottom. We have controls on the top right. As I mentioned before, they really try to do a lot. Uh, and I find that if I try to double pinch and hold, for example, uh, or honestly, just like triple pinch uh, or double pinch, things like that, uh, it takes like, you have to really get the cadence right because if you don't hit it perfectly, like sometimes there's a little bit, it's just not, it's a little tricky to do is what I'm saying. Trying to pinch multiple times and choose how long to wait between pinches and when you start holding. I find that I end up pausing my music a lot uh, and stuff like that. But it's all customizable, which I really like. Left ear, right ear, and each individual control is customizable. Pretty cool. We also have noise control on the bottom left, transparency. Uh, as far as how well the transparency works, I think it's probably the least powerful part of these earbuds. Like if I'm wearing both earbuds and I have transparency on, I, like I can hear myself snap. I could barely hear myself talk. I feel like I really have to yell. And if somebody comes over and talks to me, I'm gonna wanna take an earbud out to listen to them. I think that's probably the weakest part of these earbuds. So for noise cancellation, we have multiple different levels, high, medium, low, and adaptive. And so keeping them all the way on high, you can see on the screen right here, my results for how powerful the active noise cancellation is uh, when doing my typical white noise test where I play the sound of a jet at a set distance away and measure the volume at which these are no longer able to block out that sound. Uh, and then we can also check out some other tests as well. For example, this one right here where I tested out with a crowd sound. And then the third chart here is just a voice test, a single voice, not an entire crowd. So if one person's talking to you and you wanna kind of block them out, uh, how well does this actually perform there? Then on the bottom right, we have bass enhance, which by default is enabled. So if you like a lot of bass, you can actually change this up to level five. Of course, the EQ can also enable that as well, but, but the bass enhance really does, like these are very capable with low frequencies. I turn it off though, I don't think it's really necessary. And before we get a noise control, if we go to settings on the top right, uh, we've got a lot of things here. You can turn on or off in-ear detection. So if you don't want them to pause when you take them out of your ears, turn that on or turn that off rather. Of course, high quality uh, audio codec, we'll talk about that later. Dual connection, this is what I was talking about where you can enable this and have multiple different devices and choose which one you're switching between seamlessly. And of course we have an ear tip, uh, ear tip fit test and find my earbuds as well. And now getting into a microphone test. These are the Nothing Ear A earbuds. Obviously I'm indoor in a studio environment, so this is gonna be probably as easy as it gets, but let me know how these sound. Uh, this really is claimed to be one of the highlights of these earbuds. But now let's go outside to a much louder environment, maybe a busy sidewalk, for example, and see how well they perform in that environment.
All right, so here we are in front of a busy road. Obviously, some sounds behind me. Uh, there's not a whole lot of wind right here, but definitely some wet road behind me, so it should be pretty loud. Let me know how this microphone performs. Now, all of that would be great, but typically with a cheaper pair of earbuds like this, one of the big compromises is going to be the sound quality. And these, fortunately, don't really do that. In a subtle way that, I mean, analysis aside, what I find is when I'm listening to a good pair of earbuds, I tend to listen at a much lower volume, just by default. Subconsciously, I don't really need to turn it up. But when I'm listening to some total crap earbuds, I find that I'm always turning the volume up because subconsciously, like, I'm just looking for the details and you have to really turn the volume up to get those. And so while on junky earbuds, I might listen at like 60 or 70% on my phone, on these, I find myself just by like naturally listening at 30 to 35% volume, which is pretty awesome. Like they really have a lot of detail on them. The bass enhance is a feature I showed you before that can definitely rattle your head if you're looking for a lot of bass. And some people really like that. Personally, I don't enable that unless I'm like working out or listening to some genres of music that would really call for that. I think in many situations, you don't even need that. They just sound really nice, uh, really quite incredible for the price. They do have impressive codecs on here. So we do have LDAC for some really high resolution audio going through here, probably way higher than most people could even really detect the difference on. Uh, and the bass in general is just really nice and clean and smooth. Like I said, even without bass enhance, uh, it definitely can rattle your head if you want it but I just think it sounds so good as it is. They're definitely a more analytical pair of earbuds. Uh, the upper mid range and lower treble ranges are definitely very, very pronounced, which you get a lot of detail and clarity on here. And, and I mean, I don't really have a lot to complain about here. In general, these just do a great job for pretty much any genre I listen to. If you wanna know a little bit more about like the profile and how well uh, these sound at different frequencies, uh, you can actually check out my friend Brandon's video that this is Tech Today. He had a really good one where he dove into the full frequency response of these earbuds. Uh, so you can learn a little bit more about that. I'll link that video down below. All right, so we tested the microphones. We know the sound quality is really good on these. We know they do basically every fe every feature I'd want. Uh, they have active noise cancellation. Like these check pretty much every box. And when you're looking at cheap earbuds, a lot like budget-friendly phones, you typically see people cutting corners. Either they cut corners on build quality or they just really maximize one feature and everything else kind of sucks or they're just mediocre at everything. So it's really pretty rare to see a pair of earbuds doing so well at so many things. And who knows, maybe longevity is going to be the problem. I don't know, I've only had these for a couple weeks now. But I mean, from what I can tell, I think that these are really going to be a compelling pair. However, not everything is perfect. I have a couple small complaints with these. One, like I said before, there is no wireless charging. I think if that's the only thing that they decided to omit, I don't, I can't really complain. That's totally fine by me, especially at this price. The second thing I don't really like is that when you put them in your ear, much like the Nothing Ear 2, they make this weird sound. Uh, I can't really explain what the sound is. It's like a digital chirp, kind of. And I think it's just like not a really comfortable thing. Like it's not really what I wanted to listen to when I put them in my ear. It's a little bit irritating, actually. And then the third kind of tiny, it's not even really an issue. It's more of a me problem, honestly. Uh, happens with AirPods too. And that's the left earbud works its way out of my ear. So starting off with who should not buy these earbuds and then who should buy these earbuds, People should not buy these earbuds if you're like a hardcore audio enthusiast because you'd probably enjoy the Nothing Ear regular a little bit more. Uh, they're $50 more expensive and, and they have a lot to offer um, coming for a more expensive model there. And then another group of people who might not want to buy these would be hardcore athletes, anyone who's like sweating a lot or moving around a lot, doing burpees and stuff like that. Uh, you might want to buy a pair of earbuds that has wingtips on them. Like I said, these might work their way out of your ears, but hey, they might not. Everyone's ears are different. But who should be buying this? Well, I think a lot of people would really enjoy these. I think they have an amazing appearance. I love the design, just so unique and so different. And I think a lot of earbuds at this price are just ugly and just like junky plastic. Like it's really monochromatic. Like I think these do a much better job. These also kind of feel like they were designed by uh, an enthusiast, like somebody that I would picture would actually buy them for themselves. Like they're not gonna say like, all right, well, what's gonna sell well to the masses? It feels like somebody said, hey, like I really like like audio quality and I really like these things. Let's try to maximize as much as possible into $99. And I think that's really what they did here. It doesn't feel like this was designed by a boardroom calculating market gaps. Like this, this just seemed like an enthusiast, which I really like to see. And like I said before, I have a checklist of what I like to see in earbuds and these check 
basically every box except wireless charging. So, so those are the Nothing Ear A. I'll drop a link down below so you guys can pick up a pair for yourselves if you want to. Uh, like I said, three different colors, awesome design, but let me know what you think about them. Let me know if you want me to compare these to any other pair out there. Um, like Soundcore makes some pretty competitive cheap earbuds as well. But if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan, and I'll see you in the Nothing Ear regular video.